My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Welcome to Baldur's Gate, a veritable nest of rats and vipers clinging to the rocky slopes overlooking the Chiontar River. From their high perches in the upper city, the local nobles, known as Patriars, gaze down with veiled contempt upon the common rabble in the grimy lower city which hugs the foggy harbor. The whole of Baldur's Gate reeks of blood, crime, and opportunity. One can easily fathom why pirates and traders are drawn to this place like flies to a carcass. Following the river further east would eventually lead you to Elturel, capital of the holy land of Eltugard. Or at least, that was the case until a few days ago. The flood of refugees from Elturel has gotten worse since news first arrived that the city has fallen. Everyone is saying Baldur's Gate is next, but no one truly knows who or what has claimed Elthorel. The Patriarchs pay a mercenary company called the Flaming Fist to protect their interests in Baldur's Gate, and by extension, the city itself. The Flaming Fist has gained even more power since their charismatic leader, Ulda Ravengard, claimed the title of Grand Duke a few years ago. Apparently, Ravengard is missing. In his absence, the Flaming Fist has sealed the city's gates to staunch the flow of refugees. No one is allowed in or out. All of this is brought to your attention shortly after dawn, when you are handed an official notice of conscription by a surly-looking soldier barely out of his teens. In times of crisis, the Flaming Fist has the broad authority to draft whoever is deemed necessary in order to defend the city. You are ordered to report to Lieutenant Doran at the Basilisk Gate <laughs> at Four Bells. Refusal to comply will result in your arrest, but you know that with the Grand Duke missing, there is no real limit to the punitive powers of the Flaming Fist. The order is signed, Captain Darman Zaj. You have no choice. You must do as the conscription commands. You gather what belongings you think you may need for an extended time away from home, and set out into the overcast morning. Now, for our first roll of the evening and first roll of the campaign. Samus, since you are the newest to 5th uh, edition, you get to roll it. Uh, 1d6, please. Five. Excellent. Persephone, where will you be traveling from to get to the Basilisk Gate? Uh, from my parents' house, which is where I'm staying. What class people live. <laughs> All right, so probably uh, Lower City then, one of the nicer neighborhoods. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. As you are walking towards the Basilisk Gate uh, this afternoon, 
the rainy skies begin to drizzle and then to rain and suddenly there is a downpour everybody begins to scatter to find cover you duck into a little uh, shaded uh, covered area where you can avoid the rain and stepping in right next to you is none other than Jonas Goodnight he has red hair He's got a stocky build. He has a long, waxed mustache. He's past his prime, but he's still dashing. Mid-fifties. I'll take this weather. It'll be another quiet afternoon at the Oasis, I'm afraid. Say, you look familiar. You wouldn't happen to be a fellow board treader. I am indeed. Have I seen you perform somewhere? <laughs> Indeed. Good joke. I am, of course, of course, am the head of the Oasis Theater in Little Kalmshan. Of but you knew that already. Of course uh, I have. And I knew you were an actress. Something about your nose. It, uh, it, you know, my nose is one of the uh, more popular bits about me, but I also am pretty good with a sonnet here and there. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> well, what is your name, milady? Uh, Jonas Goodnight, at your service. Uh, Jonas, uh, I, my name's Persephone. I used to travel with the Admiral's players, but we're on hiatus for now. Ah, excellent, excellent. Uh, what are you doing now to keep yourself busy? Well, uh, I don't know if you heard about the you know, rather popular comedy show I had been doing that was recently shut down by the Flaming Fist. But that was, that was me. Hmm, I see. Well, we must do our best to serve our art the best way we can. Although these days, especially with the closures, um, it's going to be interesting times. Um, you see him, he's sort of looking at your... Uh, Rapier, he says. You know anything about combat? I know enough to get by, and maybe to help some other people get by. I see. Uh, not stage combat, mind. I'm talking about actual combat. I can do both. Excellent. Uh, an amazing new production I'm working on. I have something brand new. Now, the city, no one in the city has ever seen anything like it. It's the first... Audience Interactive Adventure. That sounds intriguing. Tell me more. Well, we're workshopping it now, and we could use someone who's handy with a blade and happens to know the difference between a soliloquy and sophistry. If you have adventurous friends that you could bring... I, I do know a few people that might be able to, uh, to help out with that. You need somebody who knows real combat, though, for an interactive audience experience? Uh, it would all become clear. I mean, the details are still being worked out, but uh, yes, uh, actual combat. Uh, it doesn't have to be with a sword. It could be with any martial weapons or maybe even some magic. Who knows? But uh, uh, actual deadly experience is what we're looking for um and um if uh, if you are interested uh, you should come and see me at the oasis uh, little callum shan um, um now that the gates are closed uh, well we'll figure something out uh, where there's a will there is a way um, you must go on oh that's catchy <laughs> mind if i steal that my dad used to say it but sure Oh, very good. The show must go on. Oh, look, the rain seems to be lifting. Uh, good day to you, milady. I've seen you. Likewise. And you continue on your way. The Basilisk Gate pierces the city's eastern wall and takes its name from the various statues that rest in its niches and perch atop its battlements. Unseen beyond the sealed gate, a dirt road stretches through the outer city slums to the bridge known as Worm's Crossing, then to distant realms beyond. The square is muddy from the earlier rain, and there's a sullenness in the air that promises more to come. 
Dozens of flaming fist soldiers are trying to control an angry mob of commoners eager to live to leave the city. Standing off to the side with a worried expression is Doran. You all arrive within moments of each other. If you could all take a moment to describe yourselves again, just to help with everyone's mental imagery, I will start with Rim. Rim stands at about 6'8". He is a silver dragonborn. Uh, he has a gentle expression, but tends to hide his face. He is wearing a black silk cloak. Excellent. Next we have Typhon. Typhon is a slim human male, uh, probably mid-30s. He uh, carries his back very straight. He is dressed in fine but muted clothing, hair pulled back neatly. Very piercing green eyes dart quickly, but um, but uh, but purposefully about him as he stands and takes in the scene. Silas? Uh, Silas Khan, half human, half moon elf. Is uh, 22 years of age, standing five foot five, and uh, lithe 114 pounds, about average height and weight for a half elf. His skin is very pale to the point that it's almost gray, but it has light blue shading. He has silver hair that's a little bit unkempt, but the silver is on the dull side uh, of almost white rather than silver. His eyes uh, in the light are almost hard to see. They're such a light gray, they appear to be white. He's wearing a warrior's outfit, a chainmail shirt covered with straps and leather and cloth and things. Uh, and he moves carefully but confidently and uh, looks for everything like a very young warrior moving with purpose. A little bit confused as to how this cast of characters is coming together once again. Falkrun. Proud, there you go. The proud chin of Falkroon stands about as high as it can on her four foot three uh, frame. But uh, say being a dwarf of no. Just make sure you're talking yeah. this way. Yeah. Being a, a dwarf of, uh, of good stature, she and her, uh, with her bright red copper hair in a, in a tight braid behind her head, she serves the crying god and the people of the lower city to the best of her abilities. Uh, uh, as quick with a healing as she is with a drink, she tries very hard to do what is right, though oftentimes find herself, for lack of a better pun, falling short. Very nice. Persephone. Persephone is a 33-year-old uh, bard who has uh, been traveling for most of her uh, young adult life with a... Uh, traveling uh, troop of actors who she's very fond of, but who had to disband temporarily because two of the lead actors fell very, and uh, shareholders fell very sick. Um, so she came back home to live with uh, her parents in Boulder Gate. She's blonde, green eyes, and prefers to wear uh, what I guess is best described as men's clothing, but it has nothing to do with being sloppy or unfeminine. She uh, just prefers the ease for fighting and for uh, performing. Excellent. And last but not least, Doran. Yes, Doran is a human male uh, approaching 40, a little bit of salt and pepper hair going on. Um, he is dressed uh, probably a little bit similarly to Silas in, in chain mail and, um, and some leather armor um and he has a on one hip a long sword with a rather uh beaten and sort of almost abused looking hilt and the other on the other hip he has um a finely carved tankard excellent um and as silas mentioned i believe that all of you except for two know each other from a previous uh misadventure um, Typhon and Falkrun, uh, which, by the way, things worked out, I don't believe you've ever met, correct? Sounds like it. Yeah, that's what I'm All right, now that everyone has introduced themselves, you all approach Doran. What do you do? 
So I know that they're... I've been waiting for them, right? For this group? Yes. I just sort of uh, flag people over as they show up. Lieutenant Doran, I did a double take when I saw your name on that summons. And yet, time after time, I look back and there it is. So what exactly are you planning here calling me by official order? Have I not paid my debts? What is this all about? I'd prefer to explain everything once everyone is gathered. And I'm Fine. not sure I have all the details myself. Then gather them. I'll be waiting. Persephone walks up to Rim and uh, nods and shakes his hand, but doesn't say anything. <laughs> his claw is massive compared to your hand. <laughs> it's, it's, you go to shake it and it's like, um, and you just sort of end up doing a kind of a fist bump sort of thing. It's really hard to figure out how to <laughs> do a simple handshake with this enormous dragonborn. I will snap a bit from my anger to turn and look and give each of them a curt nod um, and to say, well, here we are gathered once again. Anybody know why? I assume it's for the greater good. <laughs> again. <laughs> Doran, a little information for you, which you can relate is you are as in the dark as they are as to why these particular ones have been summoned and why they have been put underneath your command. Um, but you are under the command of this Captain Zaj. And you are looking I was just going now. to ask what what are my uh, what would I know about him? Um you know that he is a captain. Uh, for a long time, you and he were sort of rivals. Um, but in the last uh, year or so, his star has risen while yours has stayed the same. Um, you are Makes aware sense. that uh, the Grand Duke uh, Ravenguard, who is in control of the Flaming Fist um, and is your mentor, uh, has not been seen for several days. He is missing. Um, you're not really sure where or why. Uh, you didn't know that he had any plans to go anywhere. Um, but from time to time, he does. So you had assumed that he was just doing something similar to that. But uh, the rumor is that he is missing. And uh, in his absence, the Flaming Fist is reverting to its roots, which is that of a group of thugs and mercenaries. And um, Captain Zaj is doing his best to keep them from completely just becoming a mob of uh, bullies, which well, they are a mob of bullies, <laughs> but they're trying to keep them some sort of peacekeeping force as opposed to just an occupying army. Right. So Silas will approach Persephone uh, slowly, cautiously, and ask her as Persephone, I must admit, I did not expect to see you uh, constricted in to service with the Flaming Fist, uh, although I have noticed that your comedies have been a little more acceptable of late. Yes, well, I have my reasons, uh, and I'm not really too thrilled to be back in their company either. Didn't seem like we had a choice, did it? I Rim quietly grunts in agreement. So, Doran, what's this all about? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I know that the uh, the Grand Duke has been gone for some days, but that's not so unusual. The things are getting a bit turbulent, however, and I know the captain is trying to keep things under control. So, perhaps there's a mission of great importance in this regard that can't be trusted to the rest of the the rest of the flaming fist at that moment it appears that a fight is breaking out between the soldiers and commoners 
A figure steps forward, throwing off a cloak and revealing a wild-eyed man in crimson and white armor. For Elturel and the Hell Riders, this nest of fiends must be purged! Before he can fully draw his sword, he is swarmed by flaming fist soldiers. Leading the attack is a tall man with a long, silver-streaked black hair and an eye patch. He and his soldiers brutally beat the armored man down to the ground with clubs, and he is dragged away, groaning. The crowd, which had surged briefly at the warrior's zealous cry, backs down and becomes a bit more orderly, at which the one-eyed man gives a nod of satisfaction. Just another day in the City of Blood. Doran, Doran, Doran nods like, yep, good. <laughs> well handled. You know this one-eyed man to be Captain Zodge. What would you like to do? Uh, I'd like to approach him. He's, and uh, He's sort of breathing heavily and dusting himself off as soldiers around him are pushing back the crowd. And he sees you. Just, ah! Lieutenant Doran! Are these them? Yes, this is the crew you had me assemble. Very well. Follow me. And he snaps his fingers, and a group of ten soldiers, and these soldiers look a bit tougher than the others, uh, assemble around him and round all of you and begin to escort you to a nearby shop. I kind of look at the others in the group and just shrug and shake my head. I, I don't know what's going on. Does anybody not follow Captain Zodge. Stephanie follows, but uh, she says to the group, hoping that they will hear, uh, that the Flaming Fist will hear, I see they're still about as subtle as a sledgehammer. Oh, they heard. <laughs> You'll find a sledgehammer can be quite useful. I go ahead and follow. I counted five concussions already. I wasn't even really paying attention either. <laughs> so, as I said, he takes you to an empty shop, and these ten veterans that are following, walking with him, there, uh, they all have crossbows and short swords. And while the other soldiers seem to be like their blood is up, and they're, you know, you could see they're full of adrenaline, these these fellows and there's one or two women who are not, they're, they're not um, as excitable as the other soldiers. They are paying attention, but they have this kind of strange way of reacting to things just in the normal course of their walking. They, loud shouts, you know, they slowly shift their weight, but they don't make any sudden moves. They're taking everything in as they walk. There's a, a practice deadliness to them. These would be bad people to cross. He, uh, Captain Zaj throws open a door, walks into a shop. You have moved into a shop, and it smells like a bakery, although there's no food visible. There are uh, a few scattered chairs and benches, and uh, he says, have a seat. I'll sit down. Is it done? Uh, any chance you'll tell us why we're here before we sit? Hmm. I suggest you take advantage of my hospitality, ma'am. I've been led to believe that you lot are smarter than the average recruits we get. So you shouldn't need a lesson on who holds the power in this room. I'm happy to oblige you with one if I'm mistaken. Sitting down. So, yeah. Oh, I'm already sitting down. Is everybody sitting? Yes. But I glare about it. Excellent. Thank you. I'm Captain Damon Zodge. I hope you're not too inconvenienced by your conscription. Normally, the Flaming Fist doesn't have to resort to such measures, but desperate times and all. He holds out his hand, and one of his men puts a stack of papers into it. Funny. 
I've got a box for notes just like this back at the sea tower. Damn thing seems to empty itself whenever they collect the trash. Never put much stock in these sort of reports. Not like the Grand Duke. Loved his reports, he did. Especially the one he got from his special little soldier. Where did that get him? He glances over at Doran. (laughs) I just stare back at him. I suppose that's a lesson I've learned now, hmm? Right handy to have a list of people you know to be capable in times like these. Such interesting reading. But enough. His mood changes. He puts his hands behind his back and he begins to pace brusquely back and forth. Oops. The refugee crisis, he says has stoked fears that Baldur's Gate might suffer the same fate as El Torel, of which nothing remains but a hole in the ground, apparently. Our Grand Duke, Uldar Ravengard, was visiting El Torel on a diplomatic mission when the city was destroyed. Coincidence? He spits on the ground. No fucking way. The Knights of El call themselves Hell Riders. A few of them escape the destruction and think we're somehow to blame for El Torel's downfall. What a bunch of self-righteous rabble-rousers. We're arresting them on sight. But that's left us short-handed to deal with another problem. For that, I need your help. Anybody want to say anything? Have you... Have you... Confirmed that uh, the Grand Duke is dead? Uh, no. Just know he's not here. And he was in El Torel. And like I said, El Torel's a hole. No survivors except those who weren't in the city. And that's what these refugees are. What sort of problem do you need a us to take care of. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> what do you know about the dead three? May I make a religion check? You may. In fact, uh, why don't you make a religion check also, Falcon? Thank you. Typhon, you fairly sure you know what the Dead Three are, but Falcon, you of course know that the Dead Three are Bane, Ball, and Merkel. These are three gods that have plagued Baldur's Gate for a long time. Bane, the god of mm, conquest, Ball, Ball, the god of murder, and Merkel, the god of the dead. A trio of evil. Indeed. I thought we had wiped them out. The cultists follow the Dead Three. But apparently not. These purveyors of fear and death taking advantage of the current crisis to commit murder sprees throughout the city. As my appointed deputies in this matter, you'll have license to kill these wretches on sight. Find their lair and wipe it out. Eliminate anyone who gets in your way, and don't worry about collateral damage. If you do what I say, I'll see you each receive 200 dragons. A dragon is a gold piece in Faerun. In addition to my gratitude, which is worth considerably more. 200 dragons. That could fund someone for a year. Like I said, desperate times. It's not as if you have a choice. My suggestion is take the money, but if you refuse me, I do have the authority to have you executed. But I'd rather not. Obviously, I'll be in. Imagine yeah. I'll come to that, and I go ahead and look right at Persephone. That's a good lass. 
Something about Captain Zodge looks familiar to you, Persephone. You can't quite put your finger on it. Is it out of game? Maybe if I could see his other eye, but, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't you catch on the other side? (laughs) Right. A few blocks from Basilisk Gate is Elfsong Tavern. A spy named Tarina hangs out there gathering rumors for the guild. She owes me a favor. So tell her you work for me. Ask her what she knows about the Dead Three. And for the love of Balderon, be nice. Tarina has dangerous friends. Hmm. Any questions? One lead, one threat, and one promise to be paid. I think we have what we need. Mm, nods. Anyone else have any questions? Imagine, uh, oh, uh, out of question. What's, Doran, what's your rank? Uh, I believe it was Lieutenant. Is that true? Lieutenant, indeed, yes. Okay. Uh, so is the Lieutenant to be in charge? Well, he knows enough about the Flaming Fist that it'll probably be easier if he gives the reports to me. Fantastic. Then, Lieutenant. Follow your lead. If, if I may, for a moment, um, Captain Zodge, the uh, whole sort of look you're giving off gives. Uh, are you, are, are, have you been a man of the sea, a sailor at any time? <laughs> I am a captain of the Flaming Fist. That's all you need to concern yourself with. Certainly, but we're a sea city here. Certainly, you've heard the. Uh, concept of hape, as the sailors like to colloquially call it, of half pay, or some bit to ensure our success, paid in advance. An investment to see what you want done gets done. A pretty standard thing for an adventuring party. Indeed. All right, he starts looking at your papers that seem to have details about you on them, so it's looking at them. Um, you can either each roll a persuasion check, or one of you can roll with advantage. Your choice. I can lend someone who would be proficient. If there's uh, you with... didn't speak up, though, Silas. This will be between Typhon I'm... and Persephone. Assuming, uh, as I gave her a side glance, Persephone sort of takes up that uh, last eloquent phrase, I would have, well, I can't give her assistance, can I? So I guess I could roll it advantage, though, because she assisted me. Correct. Is that what we're saying? Uh, then definitely. Okay. The, the little comment I made was the assist, so you take the advantage. Got it. Okay. Coming right up. Toggle to advantage. Hey, not super good. <laughs> <laughs> he snorts and says, Well, I did ask for questions. <laughs> Pretty sure you know the answer to that one already. Doran just rolls his eyes. So like, I'm sure he'll pay. Right. Let's Let's be on our way. So he's been, as he's been talking, he's been kind of walking back and forth. And he stops in front of Rim. And he's sort of turned away and he says, Oh, one more thing. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Rim, are you with us, by the way? I am. Yes. Thank yes. you for your patience. No problem. He just failed his, his deception check. Um, against your passive perception. Uh, you're pretty sure he's about to hit you. Uh, do you want to take it, or do you want to dodge it? In which case, he'll just try to have to make an attack against your AC. I will actually prepare myself to catch his fist with my claw. All right. So that's going to be... Uh... You know, this is going to be an attack on his part, so... If he fails, we'll say that that's what happens. If he doesn't, he'll say that you didn't get your claw up in time. All right? 
just roll this. I believe a 15 hits you. I cut out on all of the last of that, but... I uh, a 15 hit? Yes, it does. All right. He's wearing a uh, chainmail gauntlet, and he just backs ha- backhands you across the face as you have your hand up. You miss it by inches. That's for my fucking eye, you lizard face piece of shit. I thought he looked familiar. I see now. I stand up. Ah. Back in your place, lass. Every now and then, someone has to take what's owed them. I can't wait to take the 200 uh, dragoons that you owe me. Can we go now? Yes, on your way. (laughs) Good to see you again. Glares with every bit of her charisma. Rim just turns and walks away. (laughs) Rim, you took two points of damage on that. Okay. And you exit. You head back into the square in the Basilisk Gate. The rain has started again. Uh, It's hard to imagine the day being more miserable than it already was, but somehow it is. Uh, There are more people desperately trying to get out. And you can hear on the other side of the Basilisk Gate, it sounds like there's an equally large number of people trying to get in. What do you do? I believe we were given a clue. Yes. The Elf Song Tavern. No. Um, Falkron, if I recall from your backstory, you are, like to take a drink now and then, or at least did? In, indeed, I, I certainly know where to <clears throat> throw back a few. So you would definitely be familiar with the Elf Song Tavern. It's one of the more popular taverns in the Lower City. One. Indeed. Uh, yeah. To Ariane and say, uh, do you uh, do, do you uh, wish to lead the way, or uh, I'm familiar if you wish. Certainly, go for it. I uh, recognize that you've all been conscripted, and while I may be nominally in charge, I'm not going to try and give too many orders here. You and Persephone will get along well then. Try to keep up, lads. Oh, no. So, this, of course, is Baldur's Gate. Uh, you can see here in the upper city um, a wall surrounding it. That is the old wall. That right there is, in fact, Baldur's Gate. That is the original. Uh, entrance to the original wall of the original city, which has stood for hundreds of years. Everything within that area is the upper city. There, of course, is the outer city. The outer city has uh, two parts, one to the north. And you guessed it, one to the northeast. So, here is the Basilisk Gate, and Bokran, and Dorin, and any of you who spend much time in the lower city of Baldur's Gate are likely to know that the Elfsong Tavern is in this area. Uh, This neighborhood is called Heapside. What do you do? What do you say? I'm quite sure I've seen all of you before, but I'm not sure I recognize you, Miss Dwarf. A holy symbol of... Very hard to miss Is that? 
Me, that is the symbol of the crying god. And you are? Typhus Ophiacus. Uh, physician, pleased to uh, meet your acquaintance. I'm confused. I know everyone else here and not you. Do you know everyone here as well, excluding me? Yes, indeed. Though, from what I've heard from you so far, I, I can say I'm very happy to not meet your acquaintance just yet. That's oh. very rude. Very rude. We're about to be working together, I think. A little bit of at least professional courtesy is in order. Well, then. As a fellow physician, or at least a fellow healer of other people, I will expect you to look more to people's needs and less to your own pocket, then. You see... I haven't introduced you to... Ah... Uh, I just... Just like any other cleric, I just hear condescension, as if you're fluent in condescension. I work. You see, you have a gift from some almighty being that allows you to do such miraculous things. I studied and worked to be able to perform the tasks that I do, and people are no less healed under my knife than under your prayers. So, a little less condescension, what do you find? To show a little more kindness, sir, and my condescension you will see decrease. Forgive I... my patience in that case, and perhaps we can continue and in works rather than words, so we show each other our true nature. I've not seen your medal. I won't cast judgment as of yet, but all creatures are worthy of forgiveness. Therefore, I hope we can go forward. Forward it is. All right. Anybody else wish to say anything as you travel from the Basilisk Gate to the Elf Song Tavern, which is in fact in Eastway neighborhood, not Heapside? So it is approaching about 5, 5.30 in the afternoon. Um, the overcast sky is making it seem much darker than it normally is. Um, this is the 10th day of chess, which is a uh, sort of a March equivalent. Um, so it can be pretty cold at night sometimes. Um, but the uh, air coming in off the sea is usually uh, damp and muggy. Um, as you walk and the fog comes in every now and then, you see a green lantern hanging by an establishment. Uh, Baldur's Gate is often known as the City of Green Lights because uh, it's one of the ways that establishments show that they are open for business. Especially when the fog comes in, these green lights give a sort of eerie glow to the night. And as you approach the Elf Song Tavern, you see that it does in fact have a green light outside of it. Uh, Falcron and anyone else who uh, determines that they frequent this tavern, the reason why it's called the Elf Song Tavern is that periodically a disembodied voice uh, dims the lights, interrupts all conversation, and sings a song in Elvish. Um, there's no predicting whether or not it's going to happen at a particular time. It happens totally at random, um, but it's a little curio and uh, one of those things that you might not often get to have in your life, little ghostly music, and one of the reasons why people are drawn to this particular tavern. Um, have you all had a chance to look and read anything about uh, taverns and such in Baldur's Gate? A little bit. Yeah. They're generally pretty rough places. Um, it's not uncommon for there to be fights and people just drop dead and nobody lifts a finger to help. They just dump the body in the back. Sort of Wild West rules. Everybody understand that? Got it. Yes. Yeah. All right. As you approach 
the Elf Song Tavern, the first thing you see is sitting out in the rain. An enormous half ogre sitting on a barrel that is groaning under her weight. She's just sitting there looking miserable. Um, I'll, I'll walk up. Is is there anything above her head? She's just sitting in the rain. All right, she is just sitting in the rain. Ah, and I forgot one vital detail. If we can reset for just a moment, cast your memories back to when you were sitting with Captain. He passed you all symbols, little copper medallions. Symbols okay. of the flaming fist. You carry them on your person, and anybody who sees them will know you to be working with the flaming fist. Um, I do have a handout here. If I can figure out where it. Did I get one as well, or do I just already have one? You already have one. <laughs> I assume so. Uh, so you were saying, Doran, you approach Skuna, uh, approach the uh, half ogre. Uh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> walk up, madam. They really ought to build you a shelter out here. What? You're sitting in the rain. Yeah. Fine. May we go in? Uh, always happy to have the flaming fist around. And I'm just going to head in. Everybody follow him? We'll just follow on. I'm not sure where the door is, but yes. I think it's right Sean, do I recognize her as a regular for the elf song, or is she just... All right, she's seen her there before. She is a bouncer. This oh my. is the Elf Song Tavern. You see uh, various people standing around, uh, sitting, uh, drinking. People are pretty quiet, uh, talking quietly. Um, as you come in, there is a, a suit of armor standing directly to your left there, Persephone. At first, you think it's just a suit of armor, and you think, well, it's a kind of strange thing to be in a tavern, but then as you walk, it turns its head and follows you, and you can see somebody has written in red paint on the front of it the word clank with a K. All right, you were saying... Uh, I went with Falkron directly to the bar. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, standing behind the bar is a half elf. Um, it's, of course, hard to see, uh, tell just how old a half elf is. Uh, looks like he's in his 40s, maybe his 50s, but he could be 70, 80, 90, hard to tell. He turns to the bar as he hears you walk up and says, Ah, his eyes fall down to uh, the flaming fist token that you've got. You're a bit early this week, but I could pay you what I've got. Oh man, we're the worst. How's that? I need for that. We're uh, we're not here to collect. We're uh. Look for somebody. Pull the other one. Here you go. And he reaches down and pulls up a bag of coins and puts it on the counter. Uh, this should cover both this business and uh, he leans for my other business. And you're embarrassing yourself. We're not here to collect money from you. Yeah, I, I slide it back across the bar towards him and said, really? We're looking for someone. I'm not sure it's him who should be embarrassed by this. Just throwing that out there. I'm standing uh, in the back, like, rubbing my forehead <laughs> at this situation. <laughs> uh, 
He takes the gold back and he kind of looks at all of you, just sort of standing around him. He's like very confused. He's like, right. Well, we are we are not the thugs you're looking for, good man. Uh, but I see. Perhaps you. Well, could... my name's Alan, Alan Aleth, and uh, welcome to the Elsong Tavern. Get you something to drink. Like a beer. An ale, of course. Coming right up. I pull um, the the mug be... off my off my belt and set it out. To be filled as well. That'll be four nibs. A nib is a copper piece. Go ahead and set my, uh, take my tankard off my belt as well and set it on the bar and say, fill that up and put a copper on the bar. And and try not to be too quick with just giving people your money. Uh, right, well, it's four nibs, ma'am. That would be one. But you brought her own mug. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, is that a is that a thing here? Did I did I can I not drink because I didn't bring my own vessel? No, no. Same as any other tavern. We provide the ale and the vessels. We're not cheap. At least not that cheap. I I pick mine up. Uh only drink out of this one when I'm on duty. It's a it's a little special whatever you say he pours ales everyone who gets an ale uh, subtract four copper pieces so uh, working for the flaming fist Uh, not necessarily me but yes (laughs) I'm like I am a member of the flaming fists Uh, the rest of these are well, let's just say they're under my command at the moment. Ah, I see. Conscriptors. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Um, well, I guess it's for this to ask you to stay out of trouble. But if you keep your blaze sheathed, I can offer you all a free glass of Everquist wine. Ah, now that would be nice. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Is that to uh, everybody? <laughs> he said that to everybody, but when Typhon said that, he looks over at him and it's like, one of these things is not like the others. Ah! Well, he nods his head. He's like, right you are. He reaches down and pulls out a bottle of um, uh, opaque glass. He uncorks it, and there's a little bit of a puff of pink steam that emerges and then dissipates. He pours it into a tall glass, looks reasonably clean, and passes it to you. Is that Hello? altogether natural? Is that a... I mean... Everquist wine? Um, you've never had it, unless you decide it's something that is something that you would have on a regular basis. It's um, fairly good wine. I think it's one of those things that's more in the packaging than it is in the actual flavor. It uh, has this nice little effect whenever it's uncorked. A little bit of uh, ambient color that comes out. Ah, um, so that's the gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but he passes it to you. He says... Happy to provide it in exchange for no trouble from the Flaming Fist, at least tonight. So, you were looking for someone? I believe her name was Tarina. Ah. Well, he looks around, says, I'm not seeing her right now. Could be upstairs. Can we go up there and see her? Or can you uh, go up? You can walk anywhere you want. Anything yes. you can tell us about this Tarina? Is she one of your regulars? Um, yeah. I'd have to say so. She's in here most every evening. But, um, look, I don't 
want any trouble. I'm pretty sure I made that clear. So you made I'd it appreciate, clear. Appreciate appreciate if you have any questions, you take them up with her and leave me out of it. All right? Uh, well, how will we find her? We don't know this Tarina. <laughs> that would be none of my business. Uh, I think we'll manage upstairs, you say? That's what I said. Lots of people upstairs. What do you look like? Give us a hit, friend. She has purple hair. Thank you so much for your patronage. <laughs> Happy I will, to provide I will, uh... you with another ale. And a glass of Everquist wine. In exchange for sheathed blades. Indeed. Sheathed blades and a glass of nice wine. Now, um, there's a particular vintage I'm interested in if you would just... It, it's hard to pronounce, if you would. And I would lean closer and beckon him to come closer to me. Sort of to uh... say something under my breath to him. All right, well, based on your earlier persuasion... And then I will seems put be... a... Yeah. And I will put a... Um, four silver pieces down on the bar oh. under my fingers and sort of lean them forward and say just a brief description he looks at the four silvers you'll probably find her playing dice I take two back and just kind of cock my head, looking at the with two forward and just kind of give him a look like, really? He nods to say, really. Takes the two silvers. And then... Okay. <laughs> and As I'll leave. Said... I'll leave the full. F I'll just <sighs> sigh and leave them and turn around and wheel about. All right, so as you wheel about, suddenly the lights... The lights? Yes, the candles, the lanterns, they all dim. Get an elf song. You're, you're cutting in and out, Sean. That's why okay. he said the lights, because that's all yeah, we heard. The lights the dim. Lights. They, all <laughs> dim. they all dim a bit. And the uh, patrons kind of all sort of you hear a, ha, ha, and they start nodding knowingly. And this, of course, would be the famous elf song. But something's different. For those of you who have been here before, this is not the song she usually sings. Anybody speak Elvish? Yes. Rim actually does. So Rim and Silas. Rim and Silas. Samus, if you'd be so kind. Oh, sing a song of El Terrell, of water, woods, and hill. The sun dawns on her ruddy cliffs, and the fields green and still. This land of long abiding joy, home for the strong and brave, renowned by all across the realms, and never once a slave. Oh, sing a song of El Terrell, when foes are at her door, her fields torn by cloven feet, from some infernal shore. Arise the mighty hell riders, take up your swift keen swords, then charge into the hellish fray and scatter devil hordes. Oh, sing a song of El Terrell, and when the night does fall, sleep safe beneath companions. Until the dawn does call. We're bound, my bo we're bound by mortal covenant that only ends with death, and so we'll sing of El Terrell until our final breath. Thank you. This song has a strange effect on the crowd, uh, expecting the same sad love song that the elf song 
ghost usually sings. This is different. Alan's face turns white as he listens. Those of you who don't speak Elvish and who are not aware of the importance of this song probably don't understand what's going on, unless those of you who do speak Elvish inform the rest of the group. I shared the translation with everyone. I just can't like that. An interesting hymn. I hear things much worse in Elturel than they first let on. Alan, uh, that's the uh, strangest thing. I've been working here for 40 years. He's never changed a song. Didn't we see a Hell Rider struck down by the Flaming Fist earlier by the gate? That's what they're asking us to do. Not our task specifically, but... No. The rest of the Flaming Fist are dealing with the Hell Riders and others, yes. Hmm. Doran is correct. You have been tasked with eliminating the cultists of the Dead Three. Yes, thank you. And the song continues and then finishes and the lights go back to normal and everyone releases a collectively held breath. And Alan shakes his head and says, oh, that's, <laughs> that's weird. She doesn't usually sing about current events. I think the current events are perhaps more notable than even we expected. Uh, who knows? Regardless, we have a task to attend to. Good luck with that. And I'm going to just head right upstairs. All right. Anyone staying below? Black, right. <clears throat> right, I'll, I'll drop out. Anyone staying glass below? Of wine and head up. No, we'll follow. Right. I think we'll follow. This is a mess. <laughs> yes, we're all, we're all on the elevator now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see if I can let you move you. Sean, switch to elevator music, please. <laughs> it's it's the same. It's just all the elevator. It's the uh, elf from Ipanema. <laughs> <laughs> and logistics, just in case anyone was zoomed in, shift your map to the right. Indeed. That should be everyone, right? All right, so you all come upstairs, and this is what you see. Um, the entire tavern has a particularly strong tobacco smell, um, and uh, you see, indeed, there are people playing uh, dice and cards sitting all around. All of them are playing dice, and like all the both those tables. Uh, make a perception check. <laughs> One moment, Tess. Ah, yes. Um. <laughs> The people at the middle table are playing dice. The people on the table over the side are playing cards, although uh, the man does not seem to be paying much attention. Um, to your north is a woman who looks like she might be from Camshire. Um, she's watching the dice game. And over in the corner is a halfling female. She doesn't look like she belongs in a tavern. She's got uh, 
homespun robes. She's kind of in the shadows. You can see some leaves and uh, branches stuck in her hair. Hmm. And can I perceive what the genders of the pe- of the three people playing dice? Is there only one female there? There's only one female. I walk up to her and I ask if she's Tarina. <laughs> All right. How do you do this? How would how do you how do you do this? Sorry. Just walk okay. up to her and tap her, just walk up and tap her on the shoulder or do you How do I do it? Sorry. I could, yeah. couldn't quite hear you. Uh, I just I just walk up behind her and say Tarina and see if she turns around. It's not like in a scary way though. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Um, this game that she's playing, by the way, is uh, essentially uh, blackjack with dice. You roll three six-sided die, and whoever wants to stay can stay, and then it moves to the next person. If they wish to stay, they stay, or they keep rolling. If you go above 21, you bust, and whoever is left gets the pot. You're all welcome to play, if you wish. I'm going to walk over to the halfling in the corner, and just sort of sit down next to her. Um, she does not smell good. She smells as if she might work in the sewer. Um, Persephone, this woman does not move. She says, I'm sorry. Perhaps you could step where I can see you, and then maybe I can say something about this Tarina you seem to be looking for. I do that. She's concentrating on her game. The uh, half-orc that's right next to you says, Come on, roll! I'm sorry about your note, note up on Discord. Is there a problem? No. Just filling it. Yep. Okay. Got it. Everybody takes a turn. No one says, you know, I feel much more talkative when I'm playing with somebody who's actually sitting at the table and joining in the game. Fair enough. Uh, and so I sit down and, uh, and ask, D- do you have an extra set of dice that I could borrow? She passes you a set of dice. Uh, great. So I join in the game. All right. Roll three six-siders. Falkrun, the uh, halfling sitting next to you, turns to you slowly with a sour expression. Can I help you? I was actually wondering if I could help you. You seem to be... You have bad eyes. I'm relaxing. This is how you relax? Sticks and leaves in your hair? What? Oh. She reaches up and pulls them out. Hmm. Leftovers from work. I see. And what sort of work is that? You ask a lot of questions. When I see someone in a questionable position, uh, it definitely raises my eyebrows. How is my position questionable to you? Sitting here in the Second level of the Elf Song Tavern. Smelling, if I may be frank, said rather right. Said, said, said of you. How dare you? First off, I am a healer, and cleanliness only aids me in my cause, and I merely wanted to wish to see if you were in some sort of, if you were in need of aid. 
I am not. Well, then you most certainly are in need of a bath, and I wish you the best of luck with that. <laughs> Tip typical dwarf. Right, so there are your sixes. So you have rolled a six, a two, and a one, Brzevni, which brings you to a grand total of nine. Do you wish to stand or move? Or uh, roll again. Um, so, Sean, mm -hmm. as this is happening, I would like to try and keep an eye and see what um, the challenger has rolled, or these two have rolled, if I can. Um, right. Just explaining that I want to learn how the game works. All right. Um, make a perception check. Um, and also, um, we'll call this also a stealth check to see if they notice that you are uh, trying to see what you're trying to see. Right? If they seem to glance up, I'd be like, I'm just trying to understand. I don't, I don't know this particular game. <laughs> well, Wall definitely doesn't notice. He grunts. He's not even paying attention. Uh, excuse me. The half orc, <laughs> whose name is Wall. Yeah. And the woman also does not know. Notice, so you see what you see. All right. So uh, first of all, Persephone, are you staying with nine, or do you want to roll another die? I will roll again. It's twenty to twenty-one, right? It's like blackjack. Right, just like blackjack. Oh, and how much did you bet, by the way? What was the ante? The ante was one oh. silver piece, one shard. And just so you know, you can roll multiple d6s if you hover over the dice on your bar, and then there's a d6, and then if you sort of go over to the right, it, there's all three of them, yeah. it will combine them all into one roll. Or you can just do slash roll three d6 without any spaces, and it will combine them all for you. Thank you. Uh, so I rolled a six, right? You when did, I rolled again, so that's a fifteen. Do one more. Ooh, is it to twenty-one okay. or twenty-four? Twenty-one. One. Isn't it? Yeah. It is to twenty-one. So you go above bad. twenty-one, you bust. Six. All right. At sixteen. Are you going to stay or are you going to play? Can I see what? Um the Tarina is up to? She's watching uh, the roll. Oh, she, so that you roll out once you don't go right. in around. Right. Okay, um, I see. I'm going to do one more. Mm -hmm. I'm staying. <laughs> all right. Uh, one by one, they all roll. Everybody rolls, I should say, everybody rolls the initial three at the same time, and then you go around taking turns. When you get to 20, everyone kind of groans. Um, <laughs> Wall busts half orc. My name's Wall, by the way. You're pretty. For Stephanie, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you, pretty. <laughs> and the other fellow. Also busts. So it's between you and Tarina. Um, let's see here. It's between the two unidentified uh, named per persons. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, it should be fairly obvious <laughs> now that the DM has given away the clue that <laughs> yes. the, one of what you, the wall you, wall looks like. Tarina, you better play good. It's that That's classic right. Hagrid moment. Uh -oh. Indeed, uh, I, I said something that. I shouldn't right. have. <laughs> and indeed, I like I like Silas's suggestion. Wall definitely says, "Tarina, you going to roll?" And she looks at him. She gives him a dirty look when she says that. She rolls a twenty-one. Oh, well how many played. rolls did you do? How many rolls did you do, Tarina? Um, Persephone, you have to pay uh, a silver each time you roll. Six, uh, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so she takes 
So, so you rolled three. So one for three, and then you did two more on top of that? Or three more on top of that. And a six total. So four. So you lose four silver. Um, Typhon. Something about that didn't add up, but you can't figure out why. Is there anything I... I mean... Keep in mind. You know that something something happened, but you have no idea if it was something that the woman did, something that somebody else did. It didn't add up. And we're in a Wild West saloon with swords and magic. Remember, we were instructed to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> and Tarina asked me to sit down to talk and play. <sighs> and she sighs. Said, All she... Right. Um, ahead, I will say to this guy here... Um, uh, you've had a bad day, friend. Perhaps I can take your seat. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're losing all your money to this woman. Perhaps some foolish people like us can sit down and try our turn at it. I suggest you lend me your seat for a moment. Yes? You look uh, like you need a drink anyway. Uh, you're right. I do need a drink. Um, tell you what, I'll sell you my seat for a mug of ale. How's that? You see, I already bought a mug of ale downstairs. Just go have it. It's fine. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Not really. I don't know. I make a deception check. <laughs> got a glass of wine, right? I did. We all um, so that means I have a beer and a glass of wine. So I just shoved my uh -oh. beer over to him and say, "Take mine." Oh, she brought it with. <laughs> just, I'm, uh, I was mistaken. He doesn't believe <laughs> you, and he opens his mouth to argue, and then he looks down and sees the bug in front of him, and he says. Uh, it seems I was mistaken as well. Please, <laughs> have your sit eat. <laughs> um, and he stands at least. Okay. I will sit down in that case. I will look directly at her. Um, and under the table, fiddling with a piece of brass wire, she will hear in her head... I would like to know how to do that. Her As eyes I cast narrow. A she, her eyes narrow. She looks right at you and she says, uh, So, flaming fist, hmm? Huh? Well, why don't you take a break? Okay. You're pretty. <laughs> Anybody else want to do anything? I'm just surveying the scene. We're in a stand by the stairs. Crazy happening, happening. Yeah. yeah. Silas, you good? I believe he just stepped away. Ah, all right. Tarina, is it? Oh, oh God! God. Yeah, she grows <laughs> enormous! No, I'm just making her bigger so that you can <laughs> see her better. That's right. I'm Tarina. Uh, what can I help you with? Information. We're told that you have by your Dear friend, Captain Zorge. She snorts. Hmm. I see. This would be about uh, the Dead Three, then. Huh. Right? Do you ask him to know a great deal? That's my business. And occasionally I sell what I know. Sell? That's right. About silver pieces, because if so, I've already paid you. 
<laughs> About that, also. I'd sort of lean over and whisper um, to Persephone, just something wasn't quite legit about all of that. I whisper back, shocking. Right. So is it just the two of you? She kind of looks around at the other people who have spread themselves around the room of it. I see some other flaming fist badges. Why don't you invite your friends over? I thought you'd be a fan of subtlety, but sure, we can all gather around. Subtlety's fine, but for this particular conversation, the more the merrier. I would, but she's huge. I can't sit anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's just her ego. Here you say that. Be <laughs> oh, <that'd> nice. <laughs> I'll sit down. Is that all of you? Presumably Silas will join us when he returns. Right. Right. So, I have something you want. But I don't want money for it. I want assistance. I've got some friends coming later, maybe. They're very keen on speaking with me, and I just as soon be left alone. If you hang around for the rest of the night, make sure I'm not disturbed, then I'll give you your information in the morning. How's that sound? Not staying here for us tonight. I'm not going anywhere. Hmm. It's a simple protection job. I have no problem with it. Fair to me. Well, as you speak for all of you, this seems agreeable. Now that we're in league, perhaps a few more details might be useful. You're not so good at subtle conversation, are you? I'm trying to get to a point, and we've already made an agreement, so let us know what we can do to protect you, if that's what you want us to do. Who aside from are we the protecting people you already, against? Aside from the people you've already seen up here, I don't want to be disturbed. So hard. Tell us a little bit about what you do with or for the Flaming Fist. Ah, well, see, I'm not actually a part of the Flaming Fist. Not like you with all of your fancy badges. But we're not part of the Flaming Fist. I am. Oh, really? (laughs) Your badge would suggest otherwise, but whatever. My expertise lies in other areas. Guild areas. And you all know that the guild is that is that is the guild with the capital G. It is the um, thieves guild for Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate. They are quite powerful. I as soon as she says that, I just sigh heavily. Uh, fine, but I don't want to hear any more details. That's smart of you. The job is just not let anyone else up. I'll stand at the stairs. Oh. I don't want to be disturbed. Handle it however you want. Anybody care for a game of dice? (laughs) 
a real I, game of dice. One that adds up. I don't know what you mean. Well, and I'm afraid I won't be able to play. Uh, Such a shame. I, um, I'm actually just going to go grab an extra chair and just sit right at the top of the stairs. All right. <laughs> you head downstairs. Uh, well, is there one, is there one up here? There's, there's two tables. Uh, yeah. There. There's some empty chairs over there. Yep. I just sit right at the top of the stairs and like lean my sword up against the wall and I'm just sitting there <laughs> drinking my mug of ale. She looks over at you and sort of raises an eyebrow and nods and she seems satisfied. Um, <laughs> and she goes back to playing dice with whoever wants Oh, Eric, get your ass over here. Roll some bones. She seems to be talking about this fellow here. Anybody else do anything? Um, no. Rim is uh, trying to watch her dice rolling to see if he can determine what's happening with her uh, skills. All right, all right. If you're not playing, then back the fuck up. <laughs> so, you all sort of spread yourselves around the room. Sit. You know, the regulars sort of look at you, give you strange looks, and eventually they get used to your presence and then sort of forget that you're there. Um, 15 minutes goes by half an hour goes by an hour goes by I'm getting kind of bored anybody want to do anything? Uh, I'm on full on sit in my patrol car cop mode so I'm just sitting here like staking it out If I stood here, could I try and see sure. anything funny going on with those dice? Yes. Uh, Typhon, I see you're still sitting at the table. Are you playing dice? Um, no, I will go off and at a point I will cast um, Mage Armor on myself to prepare for any sort of... Alright, Mage Armor is cast. And Silas goes over to the couch in the corner and says, hello, uh, speaking halfling to the halfling. Hello. Uh, what brings you here? I was looking for a quiet place to sit. <laughs> I'm sure you could spare a moment to chat with me. Why are you sure? I shout across the room, don't bother, as I move to take a sit at the table. She's a real bitch. Well, she is a, a dwarf. <laughs> this kind of anti-dwarf sentiment is real. Uh, he's speaking halfling, you can't hear him, you can't understand what he's saying. Unless, unless you speak halfling. I, I, I do not, I believe, so... But I, I will play some dice. All right, we'll finish up with Silas here. Okay. Can I help you with something? Yeah. Are you uh, with someone here? <laughs> you looking to get fresh? <laughs> not, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not with you, but... Because uh, the... now that I take a look at you, yeah, I might be interested. Uh I've got she my reeks. eye on that. Just reeks. No worries. I've got my eye on that uh, the human that won't stop playing dice. Uh, Tarina. Yes. It's... Oh, you know her? Sure. She's up here almost every night. Oh, are, What's are your you? Name, are you? Tall boy. I'm Silas. Are Are you with her? With with. My name's wink, Willow. Wink. 
Hmm? Are you with oh, her? No. With, with, with her? Not, not in the way I think you're insinuating. Is she, is she with someone in that way? Uh, make a persuasion check. That's a forward question. <laughs> no. Are you with someone? Oh, not, not tonight. I'm working tonight, but I'm not really working. These flaming like fists. To be with someone? I don't know. These flaming fists are all up in an uproar. Have they given you any troubles? Oh, they're always like that. This guy over here, and I kind of wave at Doran. He's very serious. Hmm. You keep five or ten shards in your pocket. That's the best way to deal with a flaming fist. Yeah. Bribes. Oh, I know. My... So, you want to get a room? Oh, not, not tonight, but thank you for this inference. Well, you started it. Did I? <laughs> I'm oh, so I'm silly. Sure. Uh, people tell me that I do that. I don't mean to. Well, then fuck off. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lean my gap back against the wall next to him. Did you learn anything useful? Uh, they all seem to know who uh, the, the little uh, lovely lady... Uh, Lady T. They all seem to know who she is. I mean, you talked for a long time. What else did you learn? <laughs> I, I learned that I'm cute. You look like you have hypothermia. Did you know that? <laughs> uh, have you ever met a moon elf? Ah, uh, right. Um, no. And there's there's a bunch of them in Baldur's Gate. You should get out more. I think that business of yours, <clears throat> a business of yours, providing a good service for people. Maybe you should get out during the day. Perhaps you're right. But are you telling me that moon elves are out during the day most of all? Because that seems counterintuitive to me. Uh, we're out all the time. Ah, fair enough. Anyone else wish to do anything? Next time, I want to when I'm whenever Tarina is rolling, I want right. to. That's roll right. Thank you something. for reminding me. Roll the perception check, Perfefini. Perfefini. Oh, 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 Nicely done. She is. Cheating her pretty little pants off. Do I see how she's doing it, or I just, like, for sure know that she's uh, doing it? It's a sleight of hand. She seems, as she puts the dice under the cup to roll them, she's actually passing them up her sleeve and replacing them with other dice. Gotcha. So, Falkrun, would you like to roll your dice? Um, I'm going to walk over to... Uh, no, wait. Crap. Uh, I, never mind. I'm going to hold that. You go, Red. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah. Start off with uh, 3d6. All right, so that'll be one shard, one silver piece. Everyone rolls at the same time. You see, I say now that I now that we've gone through this once, I uh, I understand how the game works a little better. You see, your fourteen. Tarina has rolled a twelve. Wall has rolled an eleven. And 
Ulrich has rolled a nine. You wish to stay or play? You won. So. so that'll be another silver piece. Ooh. Okay. You're sitting at 19. Serena plays. Mm. She is at a 15. Wall plays. She's at 17. Okay. Ulrich plays. I'm going to. If I may, if if when Just this second, comes up, second, sorry, go Ulrich, ahead. Ulrich, Ulrich, Ulrich is now at sixteen. Go ahead, Tyvon. Um, wait, no, he's at fifteen. Sorry, he rolled a nine, so fifteen. I so, said, just say, Falcon, when you stand, ask her to switch dice. Do you do this quietly or with you... message? Ah, Falcon, all of a sudden, an unfamiliar voice. Speaks into your head from nowhere. <laughs> I try my best to act calmly, having not, not being unfamiliar with voices in my head. It does sound like my voice. I think, unlike <laughs> telepathy, it is. Excellent. Okay, cool. Okay. So it's not like some disembodied like. The gods have told you to ask for new dice. <laughs> Oh, this is right. Later. <laughs> no. Right. Just as the last roll is about to be made, there's a commotion from downstairs. Commotion. A commotion. From where? Uh, it downstairs. The, the motion has come. It is a commotion uh, from downstairs. <laughs> well, I second that commotion. Uh, you hear a loud, gruff voice. Evening, friends. We have a problem. Looking for a friend of ours. Her name's Tarina. Likes to cheat at dice. Anyone seen her? I'll buy you a if you tell me where she is, and we will take a break. <laughs>